It's the world's first self-balancing electrically powered personal transportation device. Built-in sensors and an onboard computer keep this $6,000 vehicle upright as it zooms around up to three times faster than walking speed. Perfect for large warehouses, delivery routes, or anyone who just wants a lift. Tough, lightweight construction materials enable the transporter to safely take you almost anywhere you'd otherwise walk or run. This aluminum chassis will house the vehicle's electronics. It can withstand an impact force equivalent to the weight of three large cars. Using a press, a worker attaches couplings to two motors. These couplings will connect the motors to gearboxes later on. For safety reasons, many of the transporter's components are doubled. Normally, they'll share tasks equally, but any of the twin parts can do all the work if the other fails. It's what the industry calls redundancy. Using three screws on each side, she installs the motors into the chassis. The worker then installs two controller boards in the top side of the chassis. Microprocessors in these boards control the motors. Then she adds what's called the balance sensor assembly. This includes five gyroscopes and two components called fluid tilt sensors. These instruments gauge the vehicle's position relative to the ground. The controller boards check these instruments 100 times per second and adjust the vehicle by rolling the wheels forward or backward when the rider leans either way. Next come wire clusters called harnesses. They connect the vehicle's batteries to the control shaft. The chassis cover doubles as a floor plate for the rider to stand on. When you step on, your weight pushes four rubber buttons. These disrupt an optical beam on the controller board, telling the transporter it has a rider. The harnesses fit through holes in the cover, which attaches with eight screws. Next, she connects the harnesses to a power converter in the base of the control shaft. The power converter uses household electricity to recharge the batteries. Inside the gearbox, four gears transfer power from the motor and turn the wheels. The gear's teeth are cut on an angle so they engage gradually and more smoothly. This keeps the vehicle's noise to a relatively low hum. The worker tightly secures the gearboxes to the chassis with a mallet. Then she opens a waterproof rubber seal and plugs in the machine's power cord. She tests the electrical system to ensure that it's grounded and that there's no short circuit. Next, she uses five screws to attach one of two plastic fenders. A tapered metal hub connects each wheel to its gearbox. The wheels are about the height of a small bicycle tire, but three times wider. A molded rubber and metal mat covers the floor plate and snaps into place on both fenders. After flipping the chassis, a worker connects two batteries to the controller boards. When you plug the batteries into a wall socket, they recharge in about eight hours. The transporter runs as far as 23 miles on a single charge, depending on the terrain. This machine tests the rider detect buttons by applying pressure in a random pattern. The rider and cargo must weigh at least 99 pounds, but no more than 260 pounds. The machine also tests the wheels and motors. Next, a handlebar on the control shaft. To steer, you turn the hand grip left or right. The motor responds by spinning one wheel faster than the other. You can also spin the wheels in opposite directions to make the vehicle pivot. Ignition keys with computer chips in them restrict traveling speeds to either 5.5, 10, or 12.5 miles per hour. The keys also instruct the vehicle to make slow, medium, or sharp turns. Now the fun part, taking each transporter for a test drive. The tester listens for unusual sounds and checks for vibrations coming from the gearboxes. He feels how quickly and reliably the controls respond. He runs the transporter up small inclines. It's designed to conquer slopes of up to 20 degrees, depending on traction with the ground and the weight on board. It goes down over a sidewalk curb just as easily. Only after this thorough test drive is the transporter ready for its first real trip.